Glenn Farley is here with a look at what President Trump is expected to sign. Glenn, tell us yes, more. Yes, this thing, this thing looks pretty much of a done deal. It's all part of a much bigger federal public lands package that received overwhelming support in Congress. The key driver from our state, Democrat Maria Cantwell, and from Alaska, Republican Senator Lisa Murkowski. And here's why it matters and where we are at risk. We talk a lot about Mount Rainier, considered one of the world's most dangerous volcanoes. Yeah, it's huge, but it's also close to major population centers. It's actually in Pierce County, home to cities like Puyallup and Tacoma. Our alert and warning center, it's operating 24 seven to make sure that any calls that come in are received. Brian Turbush is the volcano coordinator for Washington State Emergency Management. And as a scientist, he's witnessed four eruptions around the world. Featured on the walls here, maps that show the rivers around Rainier expected to be filled with lahars. The massive, deadly mud flows we saw during the eruption of Mount St. Helens almost 38 years ago. This is what happens when the ice and snow atop a volcano quickly melts. Mount Rainier is very heavy, heavily monitored. Mount St. Helens is very heavily monitored. But our state has three more volcanoes. Two of them are of particular concern based on the new National Volcanic Threat Assessment. Mount Baker has a very high threat level, the 14th most dangerous. Ranking behind it, Snohomish County's Glacier Peak buried deep in the Cascades. Most likely to cause a large explosion. Each of these two volcanoes have only one seismometer sitting on them, listening for earthquakes, the earliest sign that an eruption is beginning. But Turbush says with just one seismometer, an eruption may be starting and we wouldn't even know it, much less being able to find it. He considers three minimum. We'd be able to detect those very small earthquakes that are deep under the volcano. He says more monitoring instruments like this can give us more time to get ready. GPS can tell us if a mountain is bulging out from building underground pressure. And instruments that measure the kind of nasty gases volcanoes emit can tell us a lot about the nature of the coming eruption. And once you're in the unrest phase, it could escalate very quickly. It could go back to sleep immediately, but you need to make a decision right then about what you're going to do to keep the people safe. Now, right now, it's the volcano observatories handling the duties with their limited budgets. Ours is the Cascades Volcano Observatory, which monitors everything in the Northwest. And there's the Alaska and Hawaiian observatories. There are others. Another element is to establish a national, national coordination network for all of these regional observatories. What about all those little quakes that sometimes they pick up? Are, should we be concerned about those? So the little quakes is always background seismicity, and this is one of the reasons why they want more monitoring is to, to get those little 0 0.5, 0 0.3 magnitude quakes. We have them all over. You know, there's just thousands of them a year even you know, under Seattle and Snohomish and Pierce County and everything else and out to the coast. So you know what those are. It's when they start forming a pattern, when you get swarms. And then we were up covering the 2004 St. Helens eruption. You would see those pens going just like crazy, Zzzz, you know, just mm -hmm. quake after quake mm -hmm. after mm -hmm. quake. And what you end up with is a harmonic situation as that magma, this viscous rock is pulled up. This is the different volcano system here than it is in Hawaii. You don't get that where you're from, you don't get that flowing. flowing that our volcanoes just basically blow up. Well, wow. yeah. <laughs> On that, we're going to have to leave it until next time. Yes. All right, thanks, Depressing Glenn. thought from Glenn Farley. Thank you, Glenn.